Welcome back to our video module on forced damped harmonic motion. So we've taken a look at several special cases of the forcing and the damping. And today I'd like to explore one small facet of this situation. So what I've done down here is I've erased the bulk of the examples we found. I'd like to start off today with redrawing our undamped, unforced motion. This is from way back when where we just had a mass and a spring. And we saw it oscillating when we when we knocked it or when we pushed it or gave it some sort of initial condition we saw that it oscillated around its resting point. You know if we look at x as a function of time. And when we did that we saw that there was some frequency of oscillation. We said that was the square root of k over m. We call this the natural frequency. So our next adventure was to introduce damping. And we found that if we kept the damping small, we made sure that it was less than uh, 4km or b squared was less than 4km, we saw that there was continued oscillation. And then we saw that this was the damped natural frequency. We saw the frequency was a little bit different. It was slowed down. And our reasoning for this went something as follows. Here, let's finish this. B over 2m squared. And our reasoning was something like this. We imagine that we're a particle up here. We want to get back to our equilibrium position, but our damping is slowing us down. And so, in fact, what we see is we see it taking us longer for us to get there. And that's bared out here in our damped natural frequency. Finally, in red, I'd like to take a look at what happens when we add forcing. So in this case, we're going to add some forcing. We have a, the way it normally wants to oscillate without damping, then we add some damping. And then we see the way it wants to oscillate with damping, and we add forcing. And if we blow up this area right here, we end up with something that looks like this. Our orange, this is what really happens. This is what we call our resonant frequency. Okay? If we took away our force, we would end up with the damped natural frequency. And that would be a little bit faster. Okay, it'd be something like this. Now, of course, it'd be decreasing in amplitude, right? It'd be a little bit different in that way. And then finally, if we took away that damping, we'd see that the particle is going faster yet. The distance between the peaks and the valleys and the crosses of the, uh, along the x-axis, they're all going to be smaller. And a good way to kind of feel why the resonant frequency is longer than the damp natural frequency is you can imagine that the damp natural frequency wants to return to its equilibrium position pretty quickly but the resonant frequency is driving the particle further away from the equilibrium position now sure it's driving it faster back to the equilibrium position but its influence in increasing the amplitude carries with it bigger weight so we see the resonant frequency getting longer. We call what we see here in a forced oscillation, that is our resonant frequency. And the way that we say that is we say the resonance equals whatever the natural frequency is, and we can do this, we can say natural, times the square root, here we go, the square root of 1 minus b squared over 2km. And you can see in this case we're subtracting a little bit more here than we were up here. We deal with questions of natural frequencies often enough that we've developed a shorthand for it. And that shorthand is known as the damping ratio. We use C and that is whatever the damping is divided by the critical damping. And we know that the critical damping 
is 2 times the square root of km. So if we use this substitution, we see that the damped natural frequency is the natural frequency times 1 minus c squared, and the resonant frequency is the natural frequency times 1 minus 2 c squared. Sorry, let's uh, write this in as in red and in orange, the resonant frequency. Now in practice, these are almost all really, really close to each other. So if the damping's low, whether or not you're forcing is it uh, the natural, well, is at the damp natural frequency or the resonant frequency, you're going to have enormous system response. So for most practical purposes, we don't make the distinction. However, for getting a feel of how these systems respond, the distinction between these three fre frequencies is important. Hopefully today you got a little bit of a better feel of how of the different frequencies involved in undamped, underdamped, and forced harmonic motion. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.